you know, it seems like U.S. still has a lot of capital. And U.S. is the one which is investing in a in lot of market. Chinese investors are still very, very far away from making those kind of investments, right? So in a, in a post-COVID world where, you know, China is not really ready to take the leadership mantle, while the U.S. is not leading the world or not deploying its capital, where does, where does it leave you know, companies like us uh, in the emerging markets. What, what do you think is a good way for us to play this out to our advantage? It's a great question. So on the one hand, your, your, so there's the difference between the sort of geography of origin of capital and just the kind of global liquidity that exists, right? As we know, there is actually a global savings glut. There is the world had been sort of a wash in liquidity. When you think about the returns that the global uh, uh, pools of capital seek, so by far the largest asset pool in the world is private wealth. A lot of your companies obviously uh, benefit uh, from that in many ways. Then comes uh, pension funds um, and, uh, and other very large institutional uh, investors and so on down the line until you get to hedge funds and sovereign wealth funds that are only a couple of uh, trillion dollars total. But there are, in aggregate, a good 100 and 150, you know, roughly trillion dollars of savings out there that is looking for returns uh, somewhere or the other. So the question to, for you to be asking is less sort of, you know, is it the role of the US or is it the role of China? It's the role of capital that is moved out of savings into investment. And that has been more and more, uh, especially because when you think about Western pension funds, uh, you know, they are, they are well past the point and they're at the breaking point in many ways. You know, some call it the $80 trillion uh, you know, time bomb is just the liabilities of, um, of the uh, uh, retirement uh, uh, sort of uh, institutions, uh, 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 entitlement funds of uh, many Western economies. So they're incrementally allocating more and more to Asia where they see the returns which means that going after the, that capital is absolutely critical. Then obviously more and more private wealth, which again has been, is the, again by far the largest pool of capital that's in relatively conservative, right? It's opening up much more. That's why you see so many more family offices being set up. That's why you see the private banks moving from conservative strategies towards having these lending clubs and investment clubs and, and focusing on deal flow so much more because they realize that that's, absolutely essential client service. They can't justify their existence anymore uh, unless they get into uh, that mix. So there's plenty of capital out there that's completely fair game and it's much less. And if you think about China and I've spent quite a bit of time with Chinese funds, uh, Silk Road Fund and, um, and, uh, and, uh, and CC and so forth capital, they are really focused on finding these return opportunities. You know, when you talk to them, you don't feel as much like you're talking to an arm of the state right, per se. Um, and even if you are, something Amit and I were talking about earlier, uh, you know, there are ways to, to, to uh, obviously uh, protect uh, yourself. So I, I, I don't think that this is nearly as much a geopolitical issue as people make it out to be. It's actually, there's money looking for returns and your company among, uh, among others has been very successful in saying, look, we are a high growth, you know, a, a cross-border uh, company and any source of capital around the world that's interested in these returns you know, come to us, that's still going to be the world post COVID. That I absolutely guarantee because the, you know, the, the search for returns is going to be that much 